This is three questions with Dr. Julie Warner. You like that? Is that the music? I love it. All right, we have Dr. Warner on today, and uh, we just did a, a different podcast, recorded it. I learned a bunch of new words I, I didn't know before. Uh, so your former, you're welcome. Thank you're you, welcome. thank you so much. Former uh, former English teacher now works at the federal level federal level in the U.S. government, and uh, has a new book out called Failure for Success: Teachers Describe What They Learn from Mistakes. And uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on this edition of Three Questions because uh, it's kind of looking back at some of the teachers that inspired us, what we learned from them, some of the administrators, but also looking back at our own careers and like what advice we give to ourselves. So the first question, Dr. Warner, when you look back at your career as a student, career as a teacher, like who is a teacher that inspired you and what did they do to do that? Yeah, I think my high school English teacher clearly inspired me to become later an right. English teacher myself. But I had a, a senior, I guess junior and senior year English teacher, Dr. Sims, who took a great interest in me as a learner. And I hadn't really had that experience before. I don't think I had connected it necessarily, but you feel sometimes like a number as a student. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of you know, moving through that class, trying to get the, the grade, the, trying to, you know, not get in trouble with right. your teacher. She got to know each one of us. I could feel the genuine caring about who I was as a person. Those informal conversations when you'd come in the room, things, little things about your life that she would remember. And I found that that translated into my motivation to learn from her. Mm -hmm. And later on, you know, thinking that I want to be just like her. I want to make kids feel cared for and seen as well. I know that that would be transformational. Yeah. And th like I, I literally just before we got on this podcast, I actually wrote about exactly what you're talking about, how important that is. And like just kind of knowing the people you serve. And I think that sometimes uh, when we say the importance of being seen, like our, for our students, uh, there's this perception that we always like bring them into the conversation. We always like get them talking and stuff like that. But I think for some of our students, they are very introverted and that's great. And I think that if you see them, sometimes, you know, not to do certain things, not to uh, maybe it's, not, and I think, you know, there's, there's points where you push them to uh, try things that maybe are new, but also honor who they are. But that takes like getting to know, it's not like treating like every kid in their face all the time that they're, you know, doing this. Like I, like I always um, think about my assistant principal when I was a principal, I like public praise. I'm not going to lie. I like when people are like, Hey, you did a great job, George. And, and not only say it to me, but say it to everybody. Right. Oh yeah. If you did that to her, she, if I did that, Oh, she would, she would not be happy with me. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, and I knew that about her and I was blessed to work with her for several years in other capacities. So I knew that, and it was just like, those are different personalities. Right. But if I'd be like, Hey, uh, I like the public praise. So just assume everyone else does That's That's not, you know, it's, it's, it's knowing who your students are, what they react to, how they react and how you bring out the best in them. So I, I, I love that. So now that you're, uh, now that you're actually working at the federal level, I'm sure you work with a lot of administrators, you've experienced them. And you actually said earlier that you, you actually taught in the school that you can I ask you this question I know it's not one of the three questions did you ever teach with anyone that taught you oh yes really oh, yes. what was that um, like yeah and, and also 11 people from the class of 99 at that high school came back to teach there so really there were a bunch of folks from my class yes <laughs> oh that's really interesting that's like yeah just can't get away insular. right can't get yeah. away. So, so like when you look back at your career, either as a student, you know, the work you do today, when you're a teacher, like who's an administrator that, you know, really made an impact on you and what did they do? It was very surprising to me that the former principal at the high school that I went to knew my name in high school. I thought yeah. that guy's magic. Like <laughs> there's a million students right. here. How does he know who I am? I'm not particularly like outstanding in any way. It was mm -hmm. like a C student and, you know, just kind of faded into the background. <laughs> I'm like, how does he know me? And then when I came back to teach, he remembered things about me wow. in my class, you know, and I'm thinking that is, that shows just how invested 
he is and what he does from that people perspective. And it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, that removed kind of administrator thing where he's thinking up here on the macro level. Right. He's he cares about each one of us. Well, it's interesting because it's like as soon as you said that, you know, they knew your name, uh, the, my administrators knew who I was, but it's because I got in trouble all the time, right? <laughs> so, like, yeah, they knew who I was. I actually saw um, my, so I, I used to get in trouble quite a bit when I was a kid. And uh, I remember I actually saw my, I was speaking at a conference and my, my, former principal when I was a kid was a superintendent and now I'm addressing him in this audience. And like you talk about imposter syndrome, like it hit me hard at that moment. So I was like, Oh my God, this guy knows like all my secrets. Like he knows everything I did bad. And so like, I acknowledge that I was like a bad kid, but like he knows. And, and I like, I went up to him and I didn't even like say hi. I just said, I am so sorry. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's so good to see you all today. And you kind of have this perception of how you were, but, you know, yeah. I also, some of the kids that were behave, like, you know, we consider behavioral problems were, you know, I love them. They were just amazing. And some of the stuff they did might have got some people mad. I would like, you know, if that was funny and, you know, you can just kind of see they're dealing with things. And he said something to me, I'll never forget this. He goes, um, hey, do you remember when you got in a fight with that science teacher? I'm like, I do. He goes, and he said, I'll never forget this. He said, you were right. I was like, I <laughs> knew it. I knew it. I knew I was right. But he couldn't tell me because I was a kid, right? He couldn't yeah. he couldn't side with the student. Yeah. And I was like, I knew it, right? And so it was just kind of funny, you know, like because you you see these things as an adult that you might not see when you're a kid at the time. And I, I I remember at the time thinking like, I don't understand why I'm in trouble. Like I didn't, you know, this the science teacher is in the wrong here, but it was just kind of funny. So yeah, vindication, total vindication. <laughs> but yeah, like. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes like I was known for the wrong reasons and, you know, I've tried to remedy that, but you know, as kind of your book, you know, failure before success, I hopefully learned from those mistakes. And I think, you know, sometimes getting in trouble actually made me a better administrator because some kids would do things. And I'm like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you did. I was way yeah. worse when I was a kid. Right. So yeah, you got, you got perspective and you also have yeah. the empathy because you understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, you know, sometimes, you know, I know that sometimes I used to get in trouble because I didn't want to look stupid. So I thought be class clowns way better than looking stupid. So, so I understood that sometimes. Uh, so last question, and I think this ties in so beautifully, um, to your book and I'm going to read the whole title failure before success. Teachers describe what they learn from mistakes. So this is beautiful for this question that I've been asking people this entire year is that if you could go back to your first year of teaching and you could look at your career, what advice would you give to yourself? Like, what would you, you know, say like, Hey, do this, don't do this. Like what advice would you give to yourself? Have boundaries. I assumed that I had to blindly follow the orders of the school leadership mm -hmm. and I was doing things that I wasn't being compensated for. And I know that that's kind of part of the gig mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, but I was burning out quickly. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any, uh, self-preservation strategies, uh, you're coming into school at 6.30 in the morning, getting things set up. You're teaching on your feet all day and you're on, you know, that takes so much energy mm -hmm. if you're really doing it well. And then after school, I had like three different clubs. I was a step team sponsor. You know, when did I have time to plan right. and grade, let alone sleep, take care of myself? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it's not, um, something that they teach you clearly going through your teacher preparation courses. It's all focused on the pedagogy and classroom management. Right. But I think I really wish I would have known, Hey, you don't have to say yes to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of this is actually an encroachment. Um, you know, I, parents were allowed to, to call me and you would have parents sometimes saying really unfavorable, so, you know, borderline right. abusive things to you on the phone. And mm -hmm. I, at the time thought that I had to listen to that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so there's just, there's just so much that you don't know, just coming in green about what you're allowed to accept and, and not accept. So I, like, I really appreciate this advice and there's, but there's a button here and I want to, and it's not that I don't totally agree with you. 
But I think that, like, I, I, I kind of share similar advice in the sense that, um, you know, uh, we have, like, the, you know, the typical, and I have no idea how accurate it is, or even if I'm saying it right, but it's like 50% of the people that enter the profession leave within five years. I don't know if that's true. I, like, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot. I don't know what the actual number is. But I think, so I'm coming into a job. I'm new to the school. And the, my advice based on your advice is that that should not be placed on someone who's worried about job security, who's worried about getting tenure. It should be on the administrators that sometimes take advantage of this. Right. And I think that's, it's like, Hey, like it's kind of sometimes, and I think Todd Whitaker talks about this is basically we have people that are like overachievers in our school, um, you know, always excited to do things. And then we almost punish them by just constantly going to them because we know other segments of staff will say no to everything that we ask. Right. And so I agree with you wholeheartedly. I just don't want that to be, so I know administrators listen to this too. I just want administrators listening to this, be very cognizant of that because we can easily fall in that trap because a lot of people are really excited um, and are willing to do stuff not because they're excited to do stuff. They're just worried about having a job. They're worried about doing this and then you burn them out and then maybe they don't do as well in the classroom. Maybe they, you know, struggle in ways that you don't see. And so just, just to be thoughtful of that. And I think that's such important advice, but it's not for a, especially a new teacher to do alone, right? They, they need a, a oh, ton yeah. of support. So I appreciate you sharing that. And, um, as I said, uh, and we, we, we actually have a longer podcast coming out soon as well. Uh, take a look at uh, Dr. Warner's book. Uh, lots of collaborators on this. Failure before success. Teachers describe what they learn from mistakes. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been awesome to get to know you. Uh, learn all the new words today. So I'm going to like practice. But uh, thank everyone. thanks everyone for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day. You guys sit through the music. Bye, everybody.